Today was our inaugural Rainmaker event, so Rainmaker 18. A Rainmaker is someone who brings clients or funds to an organisation. So today we were looking at how to create those Rainmakers, how to nurture them and how to retain them within your organisation. Our first speaker was Andrea Clatworthy of Fujitsu and she's their head of account-based marketing. Now she is one of the pioneers in the UK of account-based marketing. And I think one of the key things that Andrea brought today was all about bringing together the sales and marketing functions. And Andrea showed us today how you can bring those two uh, divisions together and get them all focused on one common goal. We've turned ourselves from a supporting role to a strategic, proactive function that collaborates very well with sales. So, and this is my definition of ABM. You would have seen loads of definitions, I'm sure. Treating a customer as a market of one is, is a really common one. There's, there's loads out there. This is mine. So what we're saying here is sales and marketing working really closely together. That is the core principle of making this work. Our second speaker was Stephen Waddington. He's a partner and chief engagement officer at the global PR firm Ketchum. I was once told that he is Mr. PR. Stephen talked today to us about the path of the rainmaker and very much he showed us how he has established himself as a key rainmaker for Ketchum. And he went on to talk about how he nurtures and tries to encourage the next generation of rainmakers within Ketchum, or indeed how to turn ordinary employees at other organisations into their rainmakers. I'm going to tell you some personal stories and actually show you some practical examples of things you can be doing to build relationships using the internet, creating your own forms of, of media. Um, and the internet's been good to me um, in that I, I built my career basically via a blog and Twitter. I'd encourage anyone actually in, in any professional service to use the web as a means of creating relationships. So by publishing your own content, by having points of view, as you would and as you do in any aspect of your life, but sharing those via your own forms of media, you can build relationships and become established and recognized as a, as a thought leader. Our third speaker was Kenny Logan, the former professional rugby star, now a successful businessman, and someone who's also had a dabble at reality TV. Kenny talked a lot about his dyslexia as a child, and, and indeed how that was never diagnosed, and how much of that shaped his future in terms of his professional rugby career, and indeed hit today as a successful businessman. He also talked to us about the importance of the team and having those different skills within a team. Now, rugby goes professional and when I was just 22, so I had a hard paper around my dad died when I was 19, and, or 20, should I say. Uh, I ran my dad's farm for um, six or seven years. Rugby goes professional. Why was I, what was I scared of most? I wonder, why would I be scared of being a professional rugby player playing with some of the best players in the world? I'll tell you why I was scared. Couldn't read. Severely dyslexic, left school at 16, been told by my teachers that I was thick and stupid. And again, getting back to when I was 15, I wasn't thick and stupid, I was bright, but I just couldn't process the information that I was seeing out there or hearing, and I found it very frustrating. And, I, and the, 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 the thing that I struggled with wasn't going to play for wasps, it was walking in a room like this and seeing papers, pens, and I still do it now. And the first thing I do is, how do I get out of this room? How do I now get away from this room so people don't realise I can't read and write? Then we had a panel discussion chaired by our Senior Vice President at PASL, David Kirk. And on that panel, we had Lior Franks, the Marketing Director from FTI Consulting. We had Stephen Ruff from Everest UK. And we also had Nigel Walsh, Head of Insurance Technology at Deloitte. Their panel discussion was absolutely fascinating. They're all rainmakers themselves, or they help other people within their firm be rainmakers. And they talked about the impact that technology's had over the last 10 years and how that changes how, how you become a rainmaker. Our firm is expert led. You know, the model of the business is rather than having a large leverage pyramid of juniors, to have a smaller number of people who have real in depth expertise and to help people develop that. 
We encourage people to come to conferences, read, attend seminars, um, but also develop their own thinking and create thought leadership early in their career. I might say the word blockchain and uh, a lot of us know that there's a lot, a massive hype about it. And so if you like in my role um, to try and support my clients is try and take away some of the noise. I can ask for a show of hands of people who love their insurance company, right? And even in insurance audiences, I get no hands, right? So it's a really tough world to be in. So then how do you create experiences where they do want to engage with you and do something different and create things that we, that we expect from the things that we use day in, day out and generally do love? There's technology that applies to each of these, but actually the fundamentals of this comes back to that human contact, that, that authenticity and, and, and really showcasing a lot of your expertise. So our final presentation today was by Emma Dutton uh, from the Applied Influence Group. Fascinatingly, she started out in the RAF um, and she soon joined the military intelligence group with it as an officer. Um, she did five tours of Afghanistan and she talked to us today about what she learned about influencing different stakeholders, including the Taliban, out in Afghanistan and how she could bring that to work with businesses and show them how you can use exactly the same skills and tools that she used in Afghanistan to help drive and nurture and build business for your organisation. So we think about the business outcomes, that result from elite influence capability in a business. Think about it in three ways. So the business outcomes that are to do with your team internally, business outcomes that are to do with your clients, that's where the rainmakers will be interested, and the business outcomes that are to do uh, with external stakeholders. So this could be something as simple as improving your team's performance, improving deal win rates, and influencing regulatory change, for instance, across an industry. So now after a brilliant last speaker, uh, we're off to a penthouse roof garden to enjoy some drinks, some food, and, and do some networking under a slightly more relaxed environment. Because actually at the end of the day, a lot of things about these events are about making those valuable connections so that you can go back to your office, indeed as a rainmaker yourself. I'd just like to say thank you to all those people who came today and um, that made it such a special event.